In this particular video, we are going to look at why activation functions are needed in neural network. Then we will look at some activation functions and in the end we will implement them in Python. First, let's look at why activation functions are needed in the first place. We looked at our insurance dataset example in previous videos as well. If you have not seen those videos, I would highly recommend you watch that. But there we build a single neuron, neural network, for classification problem. Based on age, income, education, we want to predict if person will buy the insurance or not. And we saw that having a sigmoid function helps you reduce the output in a zero to one range. And you can make a decision uh, for your classification if you have value between zero and one. If you have value between minus infinity and plus infinity, it becomes kind of hard to make that decision. And for that reason, uh, the sigmoid function is called activation function, which means it will decide whether your neuron is firing or not firing. When neuron is firing, it is saying that person will buy insurance. When it is not firing, it will say person is not buying the insurance. So you can clearly see that having a sigmoid function or an activation function is helpful in the output layer. How about hidden layers? We also saw that you can have a complex neural network with a hidden layer like this. Here also in the hidden layer, there are always two portions. One is weighted sum of the input the second step in any neuron is the activation function. Let's assume that we remove uh, activation fun function from hidden layer and the output layer. What happens after that? If you do the math, you will realize that you will eventually get a linear equation where the output is just a weighted sum of your input features. For that reason, you do not even need hidden layer. So if you are having a complex neural network with let's say five hidden layers, and if you remove the activation function from all those layers, then you will realize that you do not need those layers at all. Because in then, that case, the output can be expressed as a simple linear equation of your input features. Now in real life, we already know that the complex problems cannot be solved by linear equation the patterns that we see in the universe, they cannot be expressed by linear equation all the time. And that's why you need nonlinear equation and activation function will help you build that nonlinear equation. All right, now let's again go back to our binary classification problem based on the age you want to decide if person will buy the insurance or not. In this case, we already saw in previous video that a simple approach could be you plot a scatter plot where you have age and whether a person will buy the insurance or not. And it is possible to draw a linear line like this. If you don't know how I draw this line, I would suggest you watch my machine learning tutorials. And for that, you can go to YouTube, type in Code Basics Machine Learning. You will find this playlist in this playlist. I suggest you watch linear regression tutorial and you should also watch gradient descent tutorial. They will be extremely useful. And once you have linear line drawn like this, you can uh, draw a boundary. Basically anything which is more than 0.5 value, you will say person will buy the insurance, otherwise person will not buy the insurance. If you have an outlier where let's say an 85 year old a grandmother bought an insurance, where your data set looks like this. In that case, your linear equation will shift a little bit. And then when you draw boundary using 0.5 value, you might end up misclassifying some values here. So here what I'm saying is anything less than 0.5 value for Y, person will not buy the insurance. But here these three data points, person bought the insurance. This approach of drawing boundary at 0.5 is nothing but a step function. And step function is one of the activation functions. It is not very popular, but it is an activation function where for any value which is greater than, I would say 46 years of age, you will say, okay, person will buy the insurance. Otherwise person will not buy the insurance. And you already saw the problem with step function, which is it is misclassifying some data points. 
here is a simple representation of step uh, step function the second problem with step function is when you're doing multi-class classification here i have an image of four handwritten digit of course and if you have output classes zero to nine if you're using step function it will just give two output either zero or one and you might end up getting one for more than two digits and here in this case you don't know what is your final class you want to come up with one digit and here it is saying it is two as well as four so it becomes hard to make a decision and that's when sigmoid function comes in where instead of zero and one value it will give you a smooth curve between zero and one and because of this when you're doing multi-class classification you have a number between zero and one and now you can take a maximum value out of it so four has 0.82 that's why you can say this image is of digit four. Now agreed, you can get 0.82 for two numbers, but that is very unlikely. It's a float number, so it will be 0.82, the other one might be 0.827, and then you will pick that number because you are taking max out of it. So you can see the benefit of sigmoid function. This is the equation of sigmoid function. We have looked at this function in deep learning series so far, so you guys probably know about it already, and we have, done uh, logistic regression in the same machine learning tutorial series which is here so we mentioned uh, sigma function in this particular tutorial in these two so again watch these two tutorials they will be helpful uh, uh, in this particular video there is another function called 10 h which is similar to sigmoid but instead of giving a range between 0 to 1 it gives an output between minus 1 and 1 do not worry about this mathematical equation. All this is doing is taking an input and converting it into range minus one and one. The general guideline is use sigmoid in the output layer because you already saw why we need to use sigmoid in output layer. It can be helpful in binary classification. In all other places, try to use 10 h if possible. So 10 h instead of sigmoid is always better because 10h will kind of uh, calculate a mean of zero and it will center your data. So it's uh, useful to use 10h. Now the issues with sigmoid and 10h is this. If you know about derivative, derivative is nothing but similar to slope, but when you have non-linear function at every point, the slope is changing. So then you use derivative to express that slope. So derivative is nothing but a delta y divided by delta x, which is, it is telling you how much an output changes for a given change in input. So for example, in our insurance case, it will say uh, how much person will likely to buy an insurance, how much that will change based on how the age changes. Okay. And that's a very, very important concept. Uh, for derivative and uh, how the learning happens, how the loss is calculated, we'll have to again go back to my machine learning tutorial playlist and watch gradient descent and cost function. This particular tutorial is extremely useful in understanding underlying mechanism of a learning process by a neural network. Okay, now once you have derivative, what happens for sigmoid and tan h is Think about the higher values. So let's say uh, your value is four. Here, between a three and four, you see what is delta y? Y is one for three and y is one for four. So y is not changing much. So the change is actually zero. Delta x is one between three and four. So when you divide zero by one, of course you get zero. Here on the negative range also, when the value is higher, you get your derivative uh, as zero. And that creates a problem in your learning process. Because we saw in our gradient descent tutorial that you need to calculate derivative and uh, back propagate your errors. And if your derivatives are closing to zero, the learning becomes extremely slow. This is called vanishing gradients problem. I will make a separate video on that, but just for now, just have this fact in mind that Sigmoid and Tanach has this vanishing gradient problem and for that reason it makes learning process very slow. 
So then they came up with this new function called ReLU, which is extremely simple function, by the way. If your value is less than zero, then your value is zero, output is zero. If it is more than uh, zero, then your output is same as that value. So if I feed two, I get two as an output. If I feed minus one as an input, I get zero as an output. Very, very simple function. The guideline is for hidden layers, ReLU is most popularly used function because uh, you think about the math behind ReLU, it is computationally very effective. Sigmoid 10H, you have to do some computation, but ReLU is very, very lightweight function. And that's why it is very, very popular. If you're not sure which function to use, always go with ReLU, especially for hidden layers. That will be your default choice. ReLU also has vanishing gradient problem because if value is less than zero, the derivative again is zero. And for that, there is another flavor of ReLU called a leaky ReLU, where you know there is still some sort of linear line. It is still trying to reduce the value close to zero, but the equation now instead of zero is 0.1x. Leaky ReLU is uh, again, based on the circumstances, it could be a good choice to use. So here's a quick summary of all our activation function, uh, which activation function you should use for your problem. Sometimes there is not a clear answer. In the output, if you have binary classification, you'll probably use sigmoid. In the hidden layer, you'll most likely use ReLU or leaky ReLU, but you know, you have to try these out yourself. Sometimes it's neural network, machine learning, these things we already saw in our machine learning tutorials as well. Sometimes these things are all about trial and error. So you have to try different um, activation function and see which function gives you the best output. Now let's move on to coding. We already know the equation for our sigmoid function, which is one divided by one plus e raised to minus z. I have written a simple Python function for the same equation. And that function looks something like this. One divided by one plus, this is e raised to minus z, or the input, which is x. And we know sigmoid will just try to, just try to convert any value in a range of zero to one. So let's try it out. So if I try uh, 100, let's see what happens. Okay, see 100, it converted it to one, okay. Let's see what it will do to one. So 0.73, any output from sigma function bit will be in range zero and one. Okay, let's give some negative value. So let's say minus 56. See, e raised to minus 25, which, me, which means very, very close to zero. So you can see that this function is very simple, just converts any number between a range zero and one. Now the second function, which is a variant of sigmoid is 10h and 10h the equation. So the equation is e raised to z minus e raised to minus c divided by e raised to z plus e raised to minus c. Okay. That's the equation here, right here. Okay. So I just converted that into a Python code. And this function will convert a value between minus one and one. So let's try it out. So see, minus 56, it converted it into uh, minus one. And if you have, let's say value 50, it will convert it into one. And if you have any intermediate value in between, let's say one. So again, your output will be between minus one and one. ReLU is extremely easy to implement, which is you are just taking max between zero and x, okay? And see here, let's say if I do any negative value, it will convert it to zero. And if I type in any positive value, let's say one, one, it will convert it to one. If it is six, it is six. So the value remains same for positive value but any negative value I supply remains zero. Very, very simple. And leaky value 
is also very simple. So the leaky value function is 0.1 into x. So it will uh, convert. So let's see. So leaky value 5 supply minus 10. It will not convert it to 0 this time, but 0.1 into x, which is minus 10. And then if I have a positive value, of course, it will keep it same as it is. Positive value, it will not make any change. I implemented this function just for your understanding when you are solving any machine learning problem using deep learning. Most likely, you don't have to write these functions yourself. You will be using Keras TensorFlow library and those, func those libraries will have those functions implemented. So I gave you an idea of this function just for your understanding. So remember, you are not going to most likely, okay, unless you are writing your own custom machine learning model, most likely you are not going to write these functions. You will be using ready-made API from TensorFlow and Keras, etc. I hope this was useful. I will see you in the next tutorial. If you are liking this series so far, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'm putting a lot of hard work into this and I want uh, these tutorials to reach to many people, as many people as possible. So there are a couple of ways you can help me in sharing uh, in spreading the word, which is you can share uh, these tutorials on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn or via WhatsApp. Thank you. Bye.